this is, this is, this is. Hey, Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2022. Brand new episode for you right now. Episode 391 of the My Carrera Podcast. I'm your host. That's right, it's still me, My Carrera. Great to be here. Great to... I'm ready to start this year, you guys. I'm ready. I'm ready to put 2021 behind us. Uh, it's all in the past now. So uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm looking forward to MXPX shows coming up April 1st and 2nd. That's right. We're finally playing live again. 2022, April 1st and 2nd. Uh, the first is in Anaheim, California at the Anaheim House of Blues. And then one state over the second, we travel to Phoenix, Arizona at the Marquee Theater. Tickets on sale right now, mxpx.com. We're bringing our good friends Zebra Head, Bad Cop, Bad Cop, and Mercy Music, both shows. Uh, it's gonna be a punk rock extravaganza. You, you don't wanna miss out on it. Um, of course, we're gonna play uh, all your favorite songs, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> mxpx.com for those tickets. Thank you guys so much for supporting MXPX. Thanks for listening to the music. It really is the best way to support what we do. Not only going to the website mxpx.com, but just listening to the music, uh, telling your friends about the music. Same thing with the podcast. You know, if you like an episode, please share an episode. Share share it with your friends, somebody that might like you know an artist or a guest that I have on. Anything like that, I, I'd appreciate that. Um, if you want to follow the podcast on Instagram, it's Mike Herrera Podcast. On Twitter, it's Mike Herrera Pod. On Facebook, it's Mike Herrera Podcast Facebook group. So uh, I'll see you in there. See you over there. And uh, we're going to kick it. Here's, uh, here's to the new year, everybody. Cheers to you. Hope you guys uh, rang it in uh, however you like to do, you know? Uh, let's, get to, let's get to your voicemails. Um, I wanted to clear out some of the voicemails from, from the month of December. So here we go. Let's get to it. I hope you're ready. Hey, Mike. Hope all's well. This is Dustin calling from SoCal. Uh, really enjoying the between this world and the next stuff you guys are putting up. Got a couple questions for you, for, uh, SoCal style. Wondering if you have any memories of the 98 tour you guys did with Blink-182. Uh, wondering uh, what your favorite Social Distortion album is or song. I know you cover Sick Boys, but there's got to be a few others, right? And then last but not least, I know you got tattooed down in SoCal, Sid, some other places. Wondering if uh got any stories about that, too. Thanks a lot. Appreciate all you're doing, man. Looking forward to the new album. Thanks. Right on. Thanks for calling, Dustin. So, yeah, I uh, that tour with Blink-182 was called the Poo Poo Pee Pee Tour. <laughs> and we, uh, it was fairly regional. It was like West Coast. In It was like all the West Coast show, uh, states, basically. M mainly California, to be honest. California, Idaho, Montana. I think we did, um, I think we might have done Utah, Arizona, yeah, 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 that was, uh, we did Cleveland, I remember that, actually Cleveland, so we did go east, we did go east, I'm having trouble remembering all the cities we played, but I do remember the tour, it was a good time, that was actually Travis Barker's first tour with Blink-182, if I remember correctly, he, um, he had just joined the band, and everybody was cool, yeah, it was, we, we got along great, and still do. I mean, just don't see those guys too often every now and again, but uh, always fun to see them. And they're, they're good people. Blink-182 uh, always knew how to have a good time on tour. <laughs> so we had some good times. Tom DeLonge was always fun too. Um, now, Social Distortion. Yeah, I mean, I heard Social Distortion. That was one of the first punk bands I heard. Um, so my, how I you know, grew up punk. I got into, I got, I got into The Descendants, All, Black Flag, um, Suicidal Tendencies was early, early, probably earlier than The Descendants. Um, Henry Rollins, like it was Rollins' band, End of Silence, which is a, such a sludgy, I don't know, jam band type sound, you know, it's not really a punk record, but I really was into that, you know, and, and maybe that's why I, I like jamming on my bass, you know, or whatever. It's like, it brings me back to those records. But uh, those records, like Henry Rollins, Black Flag, that kind of stuff, I discovered that through my cousin and through my sister. My sister wasn't really into punk, but she was into like New Wave. So um, I got into like New Order and, and New Edition, not New Edition, uh, New Order and uh, a couple others. I can't remember the names of them right now, but 
uh, and then, yeah, my cousin, she got me into a little bit of punk. Not got me into, but she was listening to it, and I was like, hey, what's that? You know, you know, same, same person that I got, you know, five years earlier, I got into Poison. You know, she, she let me borrow her CD that was like, look what the cat dragged in. I don't think it was a CD at the time. It was probably a cassette tape, but... Yeah, so so early days, I I didn't uh, I didn't know about social distortion, but then, right around 1990, I want to say 90, 90 or ninety one. This uh, social distortion self titled. It's just called self, social distortion. That came out in nineteen ninety, and that was uh, the first social distortion album I ever heard. My buddy Don K, he uh, who who I credit with really. He, if if not for my my friendship with Don K, I would not probably be in a band right now, because he was into playing guitar, and he knew other musicians, and he knew about punk rock. Where where I knew about like the Rollins band and 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 Suicidal Tendencies and stuff like that, but I didn't know it was punk, right? And so Social Distortion, you know, he he brought he, he brought the Ramones to me, like things like that. And so like this is like 1990, 1991 right before MXPX started in 92. Um, but I was writing songs for about a whole year. So I would say 91 to nine, 91 summer to 92 summer, I was writing songs that, a lot of which became MXPX songs, uh, you know, the very beginning of MXPX songs. But um, I think I started playing bass, I would say a year before MXPX started. So. So, so 2022 is 30, you know, it's going to be 30 years of MXPX. It is 30 years of MXPX. So I've been playing bass for 31 years. It's always one year more than, than MXPX has been around. So yeah, but Social Distortion was one of two or three punk bands that I heard from Don K. And he, uh, he had this self-titled and I, I would say uh, songs I really liked, you know, Ball and Chain, of course, Story of My Life. I, I liked them all back then. And then, you know, and, and so those are a couple of my favorites. And then the, the record I probably listened to most by Social Distortion over the years is White Light, White Heat, White Trash. And I don't remember when that came out, but it was probably late 90s, like 90, 96, 97, 98, somewhere in there. Um, don't Drag Me Down classic social distortion song um i was wrong i mean i can hear it in my head right now i was wrong yeah i mean when the angels sing on that record i always thought that was a beautiful song and and to to hear you know you can go back and listen to like the first the first thing that they ever released uh uh what was it what was the first thing they ever released i think it was um let me look it up real quick. Oh yeah, Mommy's Little Monster. Yeah, that's a great record. And and so so to like, I actually went back to that record after you know after I probably had heard self titled so many times. You know, so Social Distortion. Yeah, great band. Um, they do they do a few things really well, and and they're kind of one of those bands. You know, they they don't go too far outside their their wheelhouse. Um, but you know they they released uh, what was it somewhere between heaven and hell and that was that was a good record I I thought it was good it wasn't it wasn't as punk it was like more country vibes and stuff but I thought that was a really uh, you know some great songs on that record um, and let's get into the, your last part of your question was tattoos um, do I have any memories stories from getting tattooed by Sid down in Southern California. I, yeah, let's, yeah, I got lots of memories. Um, Sid Stankovich, he, uh, he used to tattoo out of his house and it was a little parlor. Uh, it was like a little shack or a garage, like a mini garage, like a, like a work, you, most people would have like a workshop in there and he had like a little tattoo parlor. The floors were checkered and Everything looked real 1950s. He he was all always into rockabilly. I mean, I, I would say Sid influenced me during those years. You know, he he would introduce me to like rockabilly bands and and 
you know, just being in, immersed in that, that Southern California culture <laughs> for so many, not even years, honestly, months. You know, I spent months and months down there hanging out with, you know, with a lot of friends. And um, yeah, there was, there was, you know, I got tattooed anytime I could, you know, by, by Sid. He was, he was always uh, really good. He knew what was up. Um, he did all these like rockabilly style tattoos on me. And, and I've gotten a lot of stuff, you know, filled in more over the years. But he was the first guy to do stars and dots on me, like that kind of vibe. Um, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you know, getting tattooed down there. The last time I got tattooed by him was my actually my chest piece, which was, I don't know, 10 years ago. Maybe it was probably more than 10 years now. But uh, I was so hungover. And uh, anybody that's been tattooed... Well, not anybody that's been tattooed, but if you've been tattooed a lot, you you realize, oh, the, the, when I'm tired, it hurts a little more. When I'm hungry, it you know, it's it's a little, it takes, it feels like time is dragging on. Things like that, right? So like, there's things you want to do. You don't want to show up drunk on an empty stomach because you know if you're drinking, it thins out your your blood, and then you bleed more. Um, and so of course, I didn't. I knew I was getting tattooed. I had an appointment, but if, you know, you're you're hanging with your people and you're you're doing what you do. I don't remember what we did the night before, but I was well hung and feeling terrible, super tired, you know, headache, every, the whole deal. And I got I got tattooed on my chest, and it hurt so bad. But uh, you know, it is what it is. I don't feel it now, so it's good. But uh, those were those were good times. And uh, Sid's still around. He's got a Sid's Tattoo Parlor in uh, I want to say Santa Ana, California. Um, yeah, look look him up. Good good guy. All right, uh, let's get to to the next question. Uh, hey Mike, this is Eric calling from Philadelphia. Uh, been listening to MXPX since high school. Love all the side projects. Love all your music. Uh, actually met you outside the, uh, actually in the uh, Iron Gate Theater uh, in Philly in, after a 2018 show, I think. But my question is about uh, tattoos. Uh, I'm a fairly heavily tattooed guy, and I've made some uh, decidedly bad decisions regarding my tattoos. And I'm just wondering uh, where you stand on tattoo removal or cover-ups. Have you ever covered anything or had to take anything off? Um, and I'm hoping to hear, uh, you know, hear your thoughts on this. Thanks a lot, Mike. Yeah, no worries, Eric. So yeah, perfect, uh, perfect timing on the tattoo conversation. Let's just continue with it. Yeah, tattoos. You know, it's not. It, it's changed over the years. You know, when I started getting tattooed, I was 17 years old, and luckily the guy didn't ask too many questions. But but uh, you know, I had I had my mom's permission. She didn't. I wasn't going out. I told her I was going to get tattooed, and my first tattoo was the Poconacha Punk right here, right on my arm. And um, that thing is uh, still solid. But you wanted to know, you know, what what's my, have I covered up anything over the years? Yeah, I've covered up a few things. Nothing major, no swastikas or anything. Nothing, uh, nothing I would be ashamed of if you saw it. Just bad tattoos, things that I don't think anymore, things like that. But, um, you know, I had this uh, Giles from the Cooties. Uh, I don't talk to him anymore, but but he, back in the day, he had this. It was a it was a homemade tattoo machine, and it was it, it was a, a pen like so it was a ballpoint pen, uh, undone, and that was attached to a motor that you get from Radio Shack. And the motor on Radio Shack, you put rubber bands around it. It looks a lot like an actual legit tattoo machine. But uh, you put a guitar string on the back, and there's a rotating wheel. And you put the the eyelet of the guitar string, or the 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 button. What is that called? Not a button. What are those things called? The things on the end of a guitar string that makes it stop on the bridge, um, bead or something like that. Right. That goes. It's an eyelet, and so that goes on, on the back of the motor that spins, and so and then you got the string going through the pen and then coming out. So it's do 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 do, just like a machine, so just just as it should, but it's single needle, guitar string needle, and you have to use 
I would I would use like the B string of a guitar, so that it's a little thicker. Um, we probably use the 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 high E, uh, which is like 10 gauge, 11 gauge, depending on what you got. It could be 9, 10, 11, 13 if you're using an acoustic, um, up to 13 anyway. But um, you know <laughs> you're not going to get a super straight line with a guitar string tattoo machine. And so I had, you know, Giles gave me a, a jailhouse tat and that I covered up. It was, it was right here. It was right here. It was like a key. It looked terrible. So I just got this cut. Sid did this actually in the middle here. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, that, there's a few other things I've gotten covered up. But these days, you know, people laser, they'll laser it off and I was kind of just waiting for the technology to hopefully ramp up a little bit and be faster because I've heard that one, lasering is super painful and I'm not about that anymore. Like <laughs> I've spent way too, it's like after a while, tattoos get even worse. They, they start hurting worse and I think it's, it's because you're getting tattooed in places that hurt more. Um, as you fill up the spots that don't hurt as much, boom, you've got your, you know, your, your tender spots, anything, Anything, um, anything on your back isn't great. Anything on your side, you know, the side of your, you know, your your ribs, um, your armpits, the backs of your your knees, your knee pits, I guess you could call them. <laughs> That's painful stuff. Um, and I've got a couple tattoos. I've got one tattoo, I think, on the back of my leg, but not the other side. Mm. Um, it just starts hurting after a while. So I guess I'm trying to. I'm not, I mean, am I actively waiting for technology to improve? In some things, maybe yes. Like I'm hoping like, man, I hope there's just this magic wand that they can wave over you and tell you what's wrong with your arm or something like that, you know, like they have in, in Star Trek Next Generation. But I don't expect that. I don't expect that to happen. But uh, tattoos, by the way, I mean, I, uh, you know, the last, I don't know, most of the last tattoos I've gotten, I've gotten by Oliver Peck. Um, either in Dallas, Texas, or in, in at my house here in Bremerton, um, or on the road. You know, he, he gave me a lot. Most of the tattoos I got from him were on tour. And, and that's the thing is like, you know, going back to like Sid back in the day, you know, we were a band on tour and we met up with this guy Sid and he was like, I'll tattoo you guys, no problem, boom, boom, boom. And... It just was like fun to collect, you know? And, and so we started doing that more places. There was a, a little time when um, I got tattooed all over the place um, whenever I could. And, you know, I got tattooed on the East Coast a bunch of times. Um, some didn't turn out great. Uh, you know, I got a few tattoos and the guy, were, the guy was clearly not great, you know, and, and you live and learn that. And, and I started pulling back after, after those, that stint of tattoos, I kind of started pulling back a little bit and just getting tattooed only by good people. Or if it's a friend, sure, you know, <laughs> cause it's about the memories too. It's not always about how good somebody is, but, um, you know, I've got a lot of like road tattoos. Um, I've got a, an Ohio tattoo with it, it says Ohio, and then it ins it's inside a cloud with a, li a lightning bolt. Um, that's on my leg, um, just because we were in a storm together. You know, like we, we were on. It was a warp tour storm where everybody had to like go, go find shelter from the lightning, and so it was crazy. But anyway, yeah, that you know, tattoos. I mean, today things are different. You know, people don't really have too much issue with tattoos. Of course, there's job stoppers. If you get your neck tattooed, your face tattooed, your arm, your hands tattooed. Nowadays, it seems like a lot of kids are getting their face tattooed and their hands tattooed before they even get their sleeves, legs, you know, chest, any, back, whatever. I'm not here to judge, but it just looks terrible. It looks bad when you don't, if you, if you pull up your sleeve, and there's no tattoos beyond your sleeve and it's just all where you can see it. That just that's tacky, you know, and that's just my opinion. You know, if you got if you're somebody out there and you've got just hand tattoos or something, you know, and, and that's all you wanted, well, you know what? Everybody else can just go to hell. You know, do your thing. But generally though, generally, it's not not as good of a look. Um, 
Back in the day, tattooers wouldn't even tattoo your hands or your face unless you had sleeves. Because it is a commitment and, and getting tattooed, it does change the way people see you. I, I wish I would have thought about that a few times, you know. Um, I don't want to talk about it, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, overall, it's like, okay, it is what it is. I'm, I'm good. But um, I, uh, I think it's time to, to move on. Let's get to the next one. But thanks for your, your call, Eric, from Philadelphia. Um, Iron Gate Theater. That's right, Iron Gate. That was uh, my solo show, I think. The last time I played Philly, I played at the Iron Gate Theater, and it was, we had this huge snowstorm that happened um, right before it, or right when I was doing the show. So a lot of people that bought tickets was sold out, and, and it was like half empty. It was crazy. Uh, so yeah, I'll, you know, that was a fun time and it was a great show, great two shows. I think I did two shows. I think I did two shows, two nights. Or maybe it ended up just getting consolidated to one night because of the storm. Maybe somebody could let me know. But uh, by the way, <laughs> if you want to call in and be part of the show, call me, leave me a voicemail at 360-830-6666. That's um, a US number, so if you're dialing outside the states, you gotta dial one, area code 360-830-6660. That's my voicemail. Leave me a message, let me know uh, how you're doing, but most importantly, I would, I'd like to discuss a topic. You know, bring, the, bringing up these tattoos, it's so much fun to talk about. Um, something like that, anything like that, anything, whatever it is, call me. All right. Let's get to the next one. Hey, Mike. My name is Derek Stone. I'm 21, and I've been an MXPX fan since the age of 10. I wanted to ask why Punk Rock Christmas is only available in an EP format and not as the old 2009 album on iTunes and other streaming platforms. I uh, just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, also... Will there be a will there ever be a Left Coast Punk EP Part Two? I understand probably not, but it was I thought it was worth a shot asking. Um, but yeah, man, thanks thanks a lot for all you do with all your music, man. Uh, definitely means the world to me. I definitely find myself relating to a lot of the lyrics you write, man. But um, anyway, thanks again for all you do. I won't keep you too much longer, but uh, have a great one, man. <clears throat> Bye. Derek, dude, thanks for calling. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, I appreciate it, man. Uh, so it brings a smile to my face to hear your voice and to know that you've been a fan since you were 10 years old and now you're 21. Um, good question. So Punk Rock Christmas, why is it an EP and not a full album like it was uh, on CD? Well, that CD wasn't an actual release. We released, we self-released that CD um, just to kind of as merch back whenever it was released. And once we got hip to streaming and started like building our streaming stuff, um, you know, there's rules, there's rules. You can't just go putting putting songs that you don't own <laughs> up, up on uh, streaming, you know? And so we had to pick songs that we owned and we just decided, well, instead of just, just picking songs we own, let's pick songs we like as well. Um, and so it became a curated EP, you know, instead of a full length album. But not to say, you know, those, some of those other songs not on it aren't good or anything, but we don't own them, you know, with those, that was through A&M, a lot of those Christmas releases. And uh, the CD, you know, it's something you can get away with because it's not on the internet. It's just a physical item and it's, you know, I'm sure you get it. I hope that answers your question. Um, I think it answers your question. Um, just straight up ownership, you know, A&M owns a lot of those songs um, from those years. And some we would have to re-record them and remix them in order to re-release them. That's uh, probably not going to happen for most of those songs because Christmas songs for us have just, it's, it's not, it's fun, but it's not really why we do this band. We don't do this band for Christmas songs. And, uh, and I don't think anybody thinks we do. I'm not. That's not why I mean it. But I guess, I guess we just don't. I, I don't know. It's like it, we've re-recorded like life in general stuff, but um, 
you know, we've talked about doing the Taylor, Taylor Swift thing, meaning re-recording all our past albums that we don't own. And at some point it's like, okay, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do some, but I don't think we're gonna do it like comprehensively. It's just, it's so much work to do correctly. And unless we're doing it for like a reason, we did the re-record of Life in General for the 20 year anniversary of Life in General. So everything kind of has to have somewhat of a reason to spend a lot of time because if you thought recording an album took a lot of time to do, it does. But try re-recording an album and it might take the same amount of time, but generally it feels like a thousand years longer. It's just people don't have the capital to like really do that um but yeah so that brings me to the left coast ep part two will there be one <clears throat> i mean will there be another ep that we release and should we call it left coast punk ep i don't know i mean does it matter if it's called left coast left coast punk ep or can it be called something else because i feel like once you do something i mean i don't know maybe I guess I'm sorry for being so I, I don't really know how to answer that because there's no reason why we couldn't but at the same time we're not planning to um, I feel like what we do next is just gonna be what we do next you know it's gonna be something new um, <clears throat> but even if we did the left coast punk EP part two that would that would still be new it would just be called left coast punk EP part two yeah good ideas good ideas um, but uh, yeah, we'll come up with it. Don't worry. Sit tight. Thanks for listening. And uh, we'll get to it. All right. Who's next? Hey, Mike. My name is John. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I am a longtime fan. Thanks for uh, doing what you do and taking my call. Uh, I know that the uh, the band MXPX has a uh, home base and has been from Bremerton for a, a long time, and that. Um, that's, that's where you guys are from, but I, I also have recently seen your episode of Fixer Upper mm. in Waco, Texas. Um, so my question to you is how has your experience been, um, living kind of in two different locations? Are you splitting your time like 50-50 or are you spending more time in one place over the other? And, um, if you were at, if you could kind of tell us a little bit about your experience um, working with the band while you're in Texas. Um, I'm, I'm sure working across state lines um, with a musical project can be uh, a little bit challenging and uh, just kind of curious of, you know, uh, many tools you use. I'm sure you're on Zoom a lot, but, uh, you know, what, what are some things that, that help make that experience a success for you? Um, thanks so much, and, um, yeah, you're an inspiration. Keep on uh, doing what you do. All right, John. A lot of people want to know this. A lot of people ask me, what are you doing in Bremerton? I thought you moved to Texas. Things like that, you know. And uh, it's just because you get a narrative in your head and then it's not fitting with that narrative when you see me. And yeah, yeah, I understand it. Um, there's no set thing, honestly. Um, sometimes we spend a lot of time in, in Waco. Sometimes we barely are in Waco. It just depends on what MXPX is doing. Um, a little bit what Goldfinger's doing, but for the most part, you know, when I was in Waco, and I still, yeah, we still live in Waco too, but we're, but we, we go back and forth, I guess to answer your question, we go back and forth here and there during the year. It's not a set thing. It's not a half and half thing. It's, uh, it's, uh, should we do this? Oh, let's do this. We have some time, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You know, so it's just, it's that, you know, and it partly has to do with the kids schedule with school as well. So, um, yeah. So, um, but, but as far as working in Waco versus working in Bremerton, I've got, uh, for those that have seen the, the show, I've got like a, a studio room in the back and it's not set up like a traditional studio. Like we don't have everything we have here, there, but it's just got a nice atmosphere for me to just write, work, practice. I was doing all the live streams in Waco a couple of years, excuse me, a couple of years ago when we, we did, um, a bunch of live streams went right when the the everything was shut down from it was 2020 it was it was uh, 2020 it's weird to say a couple of years ago <laughs> but uh it really was so yeah i was doing all the live streams from waco so i mean 
Yeah, we don't, I don't do a lot of like MXPX recording and MXPX practicing with the guys in when I'm in Waco. So if I need to do that, I just, I fly up to Bremerton and I do it and, and I'll fly back or I'll stay up there or the whole family comes and goes. And so it's just, it's, it's not a set thing. Um, but yeah, back to working. Uh, when Goldfinger, you know, we were doing our Brady Bunch videos, which is like the, all the us in different boxes. And so when we were doing those videos during the pandemic, during the, uh, the lockdowns, the beginning of the lockdowns, I was doing all those in Waco. No problem. Not a big deal. So the internet is a beautiful thing. And um, most of the time, as long as we're not practicing, doing, you know, practicing, doing live shows, doing a new album, things like that. I can do everything else from, from Waco. So it doesn't really matter. I can do everything else from anywhere. As long as I've got internet, a place to go, you know, go find something, go film something, you know, go do some promos, whatever it is. Um, it, it's, it's worked out pretty cool, you know. It, and, you know, being on Fixer Upper was, was really the only way we probably would have been able to do that. I guess we could have just, let's just buy a house in Texas. But just having the... I guess the the infrastructure with the show fixer upper and you know getting getting uh, Chip and Joe help it, helping us out with with a lot of the running around and, and research right so that helped out a lot so we had always wanted to move to Texas or have a house in Texas at some point you know because I've always loved Texas and then my wife is from Texas so it all just makes sense because of that but. Um, but at the same time, Washington is our home too. You know, I, I, I'm born and raised in Bremerton, Washington. Um, just because we are, you know, getting a house out there doesn't mean I, we were going to leave here. And uh, because of the type of work that I do, you know, I'm a musician. Traveling is really what I do. So when I'm in Waco and, and I've got MXPX shows, I can fly out. Boom, boom, boom. I fly. I usually will fly up to Bremerton, do some, sh you know, practicing, and then fly out to the show with the guys. Uh, same thing with, well, with Goldfinger, I'll usually practice on my own, and then we fly out, I'll fly out, meet them at the show, we'll do an extended practice like the night before in the hotel room or something like that. So, I mean, like, it's just the life I live either way, you know, it's not, it doesn't matter where you are per se, um, but yeah, I hope, I hope I gave some, some good info there, you know, without spilling too much of the beans. But uh, Texas is fun. Texas is cool. It's nice to just kind of take a break. So when I come back to Bremerton, it feels, I feel like really happy to be here, you know. any Anywhere you, you're stuck is eventually going to end up being sort of like that hedonic uh, treadmill, right? You know, where, where the most beautiful place in the world sometimes can end up monotonous if you literally see it every day, day in, day out that same sunrise is going to start to get boring. So uh, because of that, I really feel like going back and forth, Waco to here, it's been amazing for, for me to have different perspectives, for me to have different things to write about. I love it. Now, traveling's gotten quite a bit more annoying, a little bit harder these days, but um, it's still doable. It's still doable, and it's still, you know, it's actually still somewhat... Uh, somewhat inexpensive if you go during the right times. Don't buy, book a ticket during the holidays. Of course, it's expensive. But if you hit it at the right times, fares are way down. So that also helps. All right. Cool uh, cool question. Hi. Me and my best friend and my husband are watching you live on TV. And we want to thank you for your show. And I hope you have happy holidays. Happy holidays. Love from Team Robo Roku. Bye-bye. Team Robo Roku, thank you so much for calling. And I was hoping that somebody from the last live stream on New Year's, or it was it was Christmas Eve Eve, we did a show, and I told people like, hey, call in. Somebody was asking for my real phone number, like, can we'll call you, we'll text you, and I was like, and no, 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 just leave me a voicemail. And I said, you know, three six zero eight three zero six 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 zero. And uh, so thank you for calling Team Robo Roku. I love that. Yeah, holidays were good. Holidays were kind of weird. It was chill. Like Christmas was super chill, which is good. You know, it's it's okay to not to have like some heck, you know, giant Christmas party and, and whatever. I know that like you want what you can't have sometimes, but uh, I liked just kind of just 
taking it easy for a couple of days. It's been, it was good. It was good. So uh, thanks for calling. All right. Mike, what's happening, buddy? This is Brett. Hey, good live show. <laughs> um, way to pull out one ad. That reminds me of Great America in 1995. Focus back in the day. Um, I played guitar back in the day, and uh, I was going to send you a uh, our new picture disc at the Gates of Eternity from '93. We just released that, so like, text me your address or whatever. Seven one four seven nine one. I'll send you guys a picture disc, and yeah. hope you guys have a great Merry Christmas. Sorry, Talk I didn't want your number out there. All right, dude. Thanks, Brett. Um, dude, okay, so Great America. Wait, Great America Fest? 1995? Great America Fest. I'm trying to remember that. I mean, it's va I vaguely re remember that, but I mean, I know we've played quite a few different res uh, like theme parks over the years, and... Uh, I don't quite remember that one, but I'm sure somebody could jog my memories with some details. Brett, you know, Focused is, was always one of my favorite hardcore bands, especially, you know, the fact that we got to hang out. You guys were always rad, so uh, congratulations. All right, let's let's uh, let's move on. Hey, what's up, Mike? This is uh, Jared Roberts. You, like, posted your, um, your phone number on your live stream. <laughs> yes, I did. I just want to say what's up. <laughs> I am a huge fan of your band. I am a NASA engineer out of UT San Diego. Whoa. And I've been a huge fan of your band since I was like 12 years old. And I freaking love you guys. And thank you for the uh, awesome show. Appreciate you. Bye. Jared, thanks for calling. I don't even, you might not even know that this is going to be on a podcast, but I hope you know. Um, my ears perked up when you said you were a NASA engineer, and that's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, well done. You must be good at something. Math, school, things like that. Smart. Uh, can use a calculator fairly well. I'm sure all those things are true. Um, I just, it makes me happy that a NASA engineer is a fan of MXPX, a fan of my band. Thank you, Jared. I'm a fan of you. So uh, I've been reading this book, Project Hail Mary. And uh, by Isaac Asimov, I think, is his name. I might be wrong on that. Uh, I might be totally wrong on that. Let me let me find out for sure because I feel, I'll feel bad if I'm totally wrong. Um, I've been reading it on my Kindle, and it's a really really good book. Uh, how do I even go out of this? Okay. By Andy Weir. Sorry, totally. Isaac Asimov is the guy that wrote like. Lost in Space or something like that. Andy Weir, Project Hail Mary. The, uh, the cover is, oh, well, the cover's kind of cool, but the, the, the story is about, it's, it's like, I don't want to give it away, but basically they, they're building this spaceship to go into space, and it, it's kind of happening in present time, like it could happen now, right? And they have to save Earth. But anyway, great book, and... I'm sure a lot of NASA engineers may have read that book. Uh, maybe. I don't know. It came out th earlier this year, I think. Um, I could be wrong. Like, like I said, I'm, I'm just shooting from the hip here. Uh, Jared, please get a hold of me again. Like, uh, I'd love to email you, ask you some questions. Maybe I could have you on the podcast. And, and I don't know if you're allowed to talk about space programs or anything, any of the work you're doing, but... Uh, maybe it's a lot like you know me working on like writing new songs, and I can kind of talk about it, but I'm not really giving any details, you know. So um, thanks for your call, Jared. Let me know. Let me know. Call me back. Let me know if you want to be on the podcast as a guest. Ooh, three minutes. I want to say you're my hero. Uh, I grew up listening to you. Uh, so grateful you guys have a faith in Christ and uh, uplifted me as a human. I can never repay you for that and keep being awesome. <laughs> You're my favorite band, MXPX. Magnify Plaid all the way. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. Whoever you are out there, I appreciate it. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a trip to just, you know, get messages from random strangers, but uh, I'm not going to say it. It feels bad to be told that MXPX is your favorite band. So thank you so much for calling. All right, you guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and sign off. Let's, uh, let's do this again soon. Call me 360-830-6660. Or, you know, you could always hit me up on the, on the message board on Facebook, the Facebook message group. Um, it's just my Carrera podcast group. And I'll check that, you know, not a lot of people go on there. They'll go and check, but not a lot of people are writing comments and, and everything. So I'll see it. I'll see it if you're there. Um, but just let me know what's up, you guys. One quick thing before we go, I want to thank a few people. I want to thank you guys for all your support. It's been amazing. You've kept us going for years and years and years. And 30 years of MXPX is, uh, it's making my eyes water a little bit. It's, 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 it's wild. It's wild to think about. It's too big for me. So I want to shout out to Bob McKnight for editing and producing the podcast. He's been with me like five years about, somewhere like that. It's been amazing. Thanks for sticking with me. I want to thank Tom Chichilla, uh, working with MXPX for almost 10 years. Maybe it's been 10 years. I don't know. Um, we've been doing some crazy things, some amazing things, and we're only, it's only getting better. It's only getting better from here. I'm really excited for 2022. So thanks to Tom Tuchilla. We'll have uh, we'll have him back on the podcast uh, when we're ready for it. To, when talk MXPX business, all that. Uh, I want to thank Nicole Swan. She has done so much for us over the years, uh, the last couple years, especially this year. Um, so thank you, Nicole. Thanks to my mom, Michelle Herrera, running the merch arsenal, running the fan club. Um, we will have new fan club shirts for 2022 soon, but she can't even print right now because everything's frozen here and the water to the print shop is off. So she can't make the screens. She actually burns her own screens, makes it, screen prints the shirts for the fan club uh, t-shirts. She does certain things too, like small run stuff. She'll screen them herself. Um, pretty amazing. So thanks mom, appreciate it. Um, and thanks to you guys, thanks for your support. It, you know, if you're in the fan club, uh, it's even better because uh, the fan club is just, it's just a, a tight knit group of really amazing people. So thank you guys for all your support over the years. And uh, everybody else that's just been coming to the live stream shows, coming to see us live, live everywhere, coming to, uh, coming to see me on my live streams when I'm doing acoustic, you know, whatever it is we're doing, um, listening to this podcast, course uh it all makes a huge difference to us so thank you thank you thank you looking forward to 2022 feeling good about it feeling like we might do some of our best things ever this year yes yes all right i'm gonna let you go until next time peace out